Hello and welcome back to Portugal. We're at the Autodromo Inti Nacional de Argar for round four of the 2021 FIMCV Repsol Championship. A stunning venue to go racing at, a stunning venue in general, very picturesque, and what a circuit it is. The roller coaster, as it's known by 4.5 kilometers, six left turns, nine right turns, and it really is a sensational track to go racing at 16 laps coming up for the moto 3 junior world championship riders just one race for them today on sunday here at a scorching algarve international circuit beautiful weather conditions thankfully the wind has dropped from yesterday which was causing havoc for especially the european talent cup riders and moto 3 riders but yes the sun hurt uh, the wind sorry has died down the sun's still shining perfect conditions then for the moto 3 junior world championship riders to do battle and they're all chasing one man. It's been all about Daniel Holgado so far in the 2021 championship. Won all but one race. 53 points clear at the top. Can he do it again today at this magnificent venue? Unfortunately, no fans to watch from trackside. As we see the grandstand empty there, I'm sure we'll be welcoming, welcoming fans back at some point soon. Hopefully this year, if not next year in 2022 because this will be a real treat for anyone to see i hope you're all set to watch at home as we take a look back at what happened in barcelona last time out para Daniel, Dani Holgado. As I'm sure you noted from those highlights, it was two absolutely scorching races over at the circuit de Barcelona, Catalonia. Scorching is also the weather here today, 27 degrees air temperature, toasty track temperatures too, nine miles per hour wind, as we mentioned, not too bad, and certainly not as bad as yesterday. Good news for the Moto3 riders. My name's Elliot York, alongside me once again is Lewis Sudeby. Sort of the main event of the day, isn't it, Lewis? Don't like calling it the main event because all of the events are uh, the main ones here in the FI FIM CV Repsol Championship, but the Moto3 Junior World Championship is where most of the focus lies. Absolutely, and beautifully poised this one with a first time pole sitter in this class, as we're going to see very, very shortly. As you mentioned a moment ago, the championship so far this year has been largely dominated by Danny Holgado. Four wins out of five. Uh, of course, the one race he didn't win being that opening race, the chaotic first race uh, in Barcelona. But he's not enjoyed things all his way so far, as we're going to see in qualifying. It was a first ever pole position for the Aussie Joel Kelso. Yeah, I mean, I'm really happy with the pole position and yeah, let's keep working for the race tomorrow. It will be difficult, hot and windy, so yeah, let's enjoy the race. Obviously, the first goal is to win, you know, but let's see what happens. You know, we can only try our best and let's see where we end up. There he is then, your pole sitter in Portugal, Joel Kelso. His maiden pole position in the FIM CV Repsol Junior Moto3 World Championship. And he's looking strong here, isn't he, Lewis? Because he was fastest in warm-up this morning. Uh, he stuck it on pole by over three tenths now. Three tenths is a healthy gap no matter what racing class you're in. 
uh, especially in Moto3. So he's looking really, really strong here, is the Australian. Absolutely. And you do wonder what effect it has when you get to go and race in Grand Prix racing against such an intense and incredible level of competition as Kelso did um, back at the Saxon Ring and at Assen. One thing's for sure, Darren Binder certainly knows who Joel Kelso is after their little collision in qualifying in Germany. But yeah, he's come back a seemingly a changed rider and he's, he's been competitive, as you mentioned, all the way through the weekend, fully deserved his pole position, took advantage of the better conditions as uh, was the case in all classes in the morning qualifying session yesterday to take pole position. Uh, and he's looking like the rider to beat. Of course, it's very difficult to say that anyone's got a clear advantage in Moto3 because it is so close. And Ivan Artola here starting in second on the grid, second in the championship, will certainly be leading the chase behind him. And with Holgado not having things all his own way, spoiler alert, you're gonna have to wait a little bit of a while yet before we get to him on the grid. Ortola will fancy his chances of eating into that championship deficit. It's a fantastic opportunity for Ortola, starting on uh, the front row for the first time since his Estoril pole. Of course, this is his debut season in the Moto3 Junior World Championship. Uh, and yeah, Lewis, like you say, some misdemeanors, let's say, on Friday for quite a few of the riders, actually, uh, who are all in contention in the top 10 uh, in the Junior World Championship. Some slow riding, they were um, disqualified or well, yeah, disqualified from the final 15 minutes of QP1, uh, which is the better qualifying session because it's in the morning, it's cooler conditions, it's where the riders mostly set their fastest lap times. Mm. Um, so, yeah, uh, Daniel Holgado and a few others quite low down on the grid today. Yeah, speaking of penalties, uh, Jose, Jose Julian Garcia, or Josito as he's known, uh, to his mates, he starts third on the grid. Now he will have to serve a long lap penalty uh, over the course of this race, pretty early on, you'd suspect, for his part in the collision um, back in Barcelona. He uh, had a pretty eventful race. He's had a pretty eventful or a pretty messy season, really, as Garcia was expected to be a real championship contender and still might be later in the season, although he's got 84 points to make up uh, if he's going to do that. Um, but made a big error, had a big front end save through turn nine in Barcelona, which dropped him out of the lead. And then in his attempts to make his way back through the pack, he literally rode through uh, a couple of riders, unfortunately, in that race. He collided with uh, Munoz and Mario Anji uh, down at turn five. And as a result, he will have to serve a long lap penalty early in this race. Big day for Diogo Moreira in fourth place. Not had the best of starts to his uh, second season in the Junior World Championship. There you can see two DNFs um, in Catalan. He didn't actually start uh, race two due to a crash in race one, but he's already got podium pedigree here at the Algarve International Circuit this year. He's in the Red Bull Rookies Cup uh, and he got his maiden pole. It's his debut season in the Red Bull Rookies Cup. He stuck it on pole at the first round and he also got a podium. So Diogo Moreira clearly likes uh, Portimao. He clearly likes this layout. And from fourth place on the grid, he can really kickstart his championship charge today. Absolutely. Uh, the history maker from Barcelona, the Malaysian Sairifuddin Asman, took his first victory uh, in this class um, back in race one in Barcelona. Race two, as you can see, didn't quite go his way. Um, but a, a breakthrough result for him. And he certainly carried that confidence and momentum here into Portimao with fifth on the grid. And he's certainly in a very good position to add to that victory and that podium. Uh, his first win and podium in his career uh, last time out in Barcelona. He starts fifth on the grid uh, today. And uh, yeah, he's going to be well and truly in the mix, you'd have thought. Yeah, absolutely. He's going to be in the mix with a whole host of riders. And we mentioned how Kelso managed to have a, over three tenths of a second advantage in qualifying, but we're not quite sure what the race pace is. We've not seen too many uh, race simulations this weekend across Friday and Saturday. So it's going to be really interesting. And this is Moto3 at the end of the day. It's always close racing in Moto3, as I'm sure a lot of you who watch the World Championship are aware of. We've just seen there David Munoz, the number 64 on the outside of the second row. It's his best qualifying of the year for uh, the rider who is third place in the championship. So like Ortola, he's got some um, ground to make up on the runaway leader, Holgado. Holgado's 53 points clear already after those four wins in five races. Uh, and his teammate, Daniel Munoz, easy to get mixed up. Um, the number 17 in seventh place. So number 17, Daniel, number 64, David. I'm going to say that to the viewers at home and also to remind myself of who's who because they're on exactly the same uh, coloured machines as well. Absolutely, yeah. Uh 
please forgive us if we get that one wrong once or twice over the course of this race. Here's how the grid lines up then with the front row made up of Joel Kelso, first ever pole, Ortola and Garcia, who, a reminder, has a long lap penalty. Marrera, Asman and Munoz uh, on row two. That's David Munoz ahead of Daniel Munoz, Farioli, and I told you you'd have to look a long way back for Holgado. There he is in ninth. Salvador starts 10th ahead of Uriarte and Rueda. Raffaele Fusco in 13th ahead of Zonta van den Goerberg, who's having his best weekend so far. Tachacon Boasri in 15th ahead of Josh Watley, Gerard Ryu, and Mario Adji, the pole man last time out. Lunetta, Scott Ogden, who was quick in warm-up this morning, 20th. Matsuyama, 21st, head of Volpe, Colin Vaya, and Harrison Voigt. Senna, Aegis, David Real, and Noah Detweiler are on row nine. And rounding out the grid, David Alonso, double winner here in Red Bull Rookies earlier this season. He starts down in 28th. Mark uh, Tapia, 29th. Roger, 30th, ahead of Carraro, Nishimura, and Morosi. Rounding out the grid, we have Eddie O'Shea. Um, bad news for him, he starts 34th on the grid, although he did have an enjoyable night last night as he sat in the hotel bar watching the football. And it's at this point that we're duty-bound to inform our viewers it's coming home. It's taken a couple of hours to mention the football, but we've, we've managed to do it. Uh, yes, I'm sure our uh, Spanish it. viewers will uh, contest that uh, <laughs> that view of the Euros with Spain still in the semi-finals against Italy. We've got a problem getting off the line there in the background um, for the 64. That's David Munoz, who was having to uh, push start his bike off the line. I hope he got away. There he is, look, he's still trying to get the bike away. Uh, can he get it started? If not, he's going to be starting from pit lane if he's not uh, careful. Yeah, disaster then for David Munoz. We saw him on the grids outside of the front row, third in the championship, so... He's going to now, if he can't get it started, which he doesn't look like he was able to, we've got a few of them helping now. Can he bump start? These machines are notoriously difficult to get going. He has got going, so that's good news for the number 64, David Munoz. Can he get round to the grid in time? Uh, I think he will just take up P6 on the start line. There you can see beautiful blue skies here in the Algarve in southern Portugal. Uh, and we're ready to go racing the Junior World Championship. Look out! for the likes of Holgado coming from row three. We've got Mario Waggi in 18th. We've got Scott Ogden in 20th, Matsuyama in 21st, and David Alonso in 28th. They're all in the top 10 in the championship, and they're all needing good results and needing to beat Holgado and the likes of Ortola and David Munoz uh, to try and consolidate their uh, positions at the, the top of the standing. So yeah, look out uh, lower down the grid because there's plenty of quick riders uh, you mentioned uh, Ogden was quick in warmer, didn't you, Lewis? Mm. Kelso, Ogden and Holgado this morning were split by just 0 0.010 seconds. So literally a hair's width between them in warm-up. So I think uh, it's all adding up to a fantastic race. Yeah, Ogden was just one thousandth of a second down on uh, pace set of Kelso and Warm this morning. But uh, those riders you mentioned out of position, the big surprise has to be Alonso um, back in 28th on the grid. I mean, he's, as I mentioned earlier on, a double winner earlier this season here in the Red Bull Rookies Cup. He leads that championship. And of course, he ran away with it here uh, in the Holgers European Talent Cup last season. So he clearly knows his way around Portimao and he's got a successful record around here, but it's just not gone his way so far. Um, so we'll keep an eye on him on the opening laps to see what kind of progress he can make uh, from the 10th row of the grid. Yeah, look out for the number 80 on the Aspar Gas Gas uh, machine. It's the same colour scheme as they use in the Moto3 World Championship. Uh, so you should be able to easily spot the number 80. Uh, but will he be able to come through the grid? 28th is a long way back. There's plenty of work to do as the riders then rise over the crest and come to the start line. There is the number 66, the pole sitter, Joel Kelso. What can he do today? He'll be obviously hoping to go for his maiden victory, but also his maiden podium in the class. Just going to see if David Munoz is able to... I think to I did see a flash of purple go past outside the window, okay. so I think he has made it. That's good news then for David Munoz. We'll see the number 57 of Nishimura just wheeling his bike back. Yeah, there he is then. The number 64 lines up on the outside of row two. So then... We're almost set to go in the Junior World Championship. Just run one race for these guys today. All or nothing. No second chances later on. Everyone in position. The green flag waves. The red flag will clear off. We'll see the lights come on and then they'll go off. Who will be able to get the jump? Lights are off and away we go. It looks like Ortola's got a perfect start in the middle of the second row. Joe Kelso just slightly uh, off uh, slowly there. 
down into turn one and it is Ortola from the middle of the front row who gets the whole shot. Kelso just looks up there on the inside, keeps P2, so not a complete disaster for the pole sitter, but it's Ortola making the best move. I think that's Marrera into, no, it's not, it's Rueda into third place, and that's tight there from Asman, just touching the back of Garcia. Thankfully, they're all through safe and keen. I think at the back, yes, they are, but it's uh, Ivan Ortola who leads the way from Joel Kelso. Actually, it's now Joel Kelso who leads the way from Ortola, so not sure what happened there, just out of screen. Yeah, Holgado got his elbows out straight away. I think he's up in seventh place. I think he's actually dropped one to eighth, but he got a decent start. Not a particularly special start off the line, but he got a couple at the inside into turn one. I think he lost one of those when he went on slightly wide at turn three, but Holgado trying to make his way through. You can see him just at the back of the screen, the red uh, Gas Gas Aspar bike with the yellow crash helmet as he tries to pick his way through. There he is just going through the frame. Um, so he's trying to make his way through. Kelso, though, leads it early on, uh, converting pole position into that good start. Uh, there's the 55 uh, of depth. Weiler, who goes through the screen. Um, but there's Holgado trying to make his way through. He's behind one of the Munozes. Um, that should be uh, David Munoz, I'd have thought, who started uh, just ahead of him on the grid after his uh, hiccup on the warm-up lap. It is Marrera in third. I got that wrong earlier on. So Marrera is in third, making one place up from his grid place in P4. But yeah, Kelso, not sure what happened to Ortoio there on the first lap. He led into turn one, led out of turn three, and then we just panned to somewhere different. So a little bit of an error maybe from Ortoio. Uh, as Joel Kelso now leads the way, and he will lead over the line. You suspect on the first lap, he's got a little bit of a healthy margin there, Lewis, coming around the final corner. So Kelso's getting the hammer down already, uh, and that's Marrera going up the inside of Ortola at the final corner. It's a complete lap one. It's Joel Kelso leading the way, but is he going to get drafted down the front straight? I think he might do. That's Garcia, Marrera, and Ortola in picture. Who is going to lead into turn one? Is it Asman down the outside? What a move there from the Barcelona race winner. He leads into turn one on lap two. Yeah, quick update on the riders out of position off the line. Scott Ogden has made ground on the first lap. He's up to 16th. And David Alonso, 28th, up to 20th. Eight places gained on the first lap for him. Important progress then for Scott Ogden and David Alonso. Plenty of work still to do, though, for the British rider. And the Colombian as a familiar face watches on. That's Pedro Acosta. He was watching trackside yesterday. We saw him yesterday, didn't he, Lewis? Yeah. Uh, they'll be taking some tips from Pedro Costa, who won in this class uh, in 2020, and then obviously won the race here uh, a few months ago. Yeah, let's say he's moved up in the world since then. <laughs> he most certainly has, hasn't he? He most certainly has. So then, where are we now then? So I think Joel Kelso still is. Yes, we are from Ortola. So Asman, after leading into turn one, has just got shuffled back down to P3. But nevertheless, it's a good start from Zari Fidin Asman with Garcia there in fourth. He needs to pick up some important points in the championship. He's had two DNFs in a row as the number 20. And remember, he's got to take a long lap penalty. So when will he take it? Yeah, it's not flashed up on our timing screens yet that he's got to take it. They'll notify him when he's got to take his long lap penalty. It's not a case of taking it immediately when the race starts, but here is where the long lap penalty lane will be when he has to take it. Holgado has made progress on this lap. He's now up into the top six. He uh, came across line in ninth, but clearly got a big slipstream down the main straight. He's had the fastest first sector of the race so far uh, on his way through the pack. So Holgado making progress. He's not enjoyed it all his own way this weekend, and he didn't enjoy it particularly here last year either. It's his worst qualifying this weekend since this race round last year. So clearly Portsmouth Mount, not a particularly favorable track for him, um, but keep an eye on him now. You can see him now on the left of screen uh, as he pulls out the slipstream. Where will he be as Garcia takes lead? Holgado all the way up to second. Fastest lap of the race for Daniel Holgado, the world championship leader. So in just a couple of laps, he's made his way up to second in the race. So and you'd have to say he's the net leader with uh, Garcia ahead of him. Yes, about to start that's a long very lap. true. Very true. So, yeah, remember, as we mentioned, Garcia's got to take a long lap. He'll surely be taking it soon just to try and get it out of the way because you don't want to leave it too long um, to take it because then you're just going to lose ground. But <laughs> there he is, Holgado, making a move down into turn five. Will he make it sick? I think he will. Uh, so a, a typical turn five manoeuvre on the brakes up the inside, clean as you like from Daniel Holgado, and he leads the race then as we come round into the bottom of the hill before we rise over the top. There was a few riders getting a little bit out of shape there in the background. Not sure what that was. I think it was the number seven of Farioli on the Laglise Academy machine. It was. So now then, what can they do about Daniel Holgado? He hasn't, like you say, Lewis, showed outstanding pace 
this weekend. He's been on the pace, but he's not been superior. Now what can he do? Yeah, Kelso has perhaps recognised that he's the danger man because as soon as uh, Holgado started to build that bit of a gap, Kelso has gone straight through on Garcia into second place. It has now flashed up on the timing screens. Long lap penalty for Rider 20. A couple of other riders also have long lap penalties. That's Fusco and Watley um, for uh, other misdemeanours. So they'll have to go through the long lap penalty lane as well. Garcia doesn't go through there just yet, um, but I believe he's got three laps to take that penalty. So he's going to have to uh, head through there over the next couple laps. He's now dropped another one down to fourth position. Uh, I believe that's David Munoz who's gone past him uh, up into third place. But the top two are building away and already Kelso getting in amongst it with Holgado. Yeah, on the outside there, Joel Kelso with Holgado. His elbows out there down the front straight. I think a little bit of a moment on the front end there. Cost Holgado time. He is. He's absolutely got swamped as Harrison Voigt, the Australians crashed out. That's a shame for the number 21. Let's keep our fingers crossed that he's okay. Not sure where the Australian's gone down. But we've got a change of the lead again. It's one of the Australian glitfiers. It's Moreira from Moreira. Moreira up the inside at turn three. Where's uh, Holgado dropped to? He's all. Oh, it's a crash in the background. A few riders went down there. Can't quite see who, but there's at least two riders. Riders. Not sure who that was. Uh, I'm sure we'll pan back in a in a moment. It's one of the TMs, and that looks like one of the Salvador, talent team riders. You see the Salvador or Fusco who's involved in there. Was we looking as they come through uh, the first sector. Uh, Tio comes through there. It's the, uh, it's the 69 Fusco, of yeah. Fusco who's uh, gone down, unfortunately. So his race uh, certainly is a uh, points contender, uh, would appear to be over. Oh, um, what's this? What's happening here? Oh, God. Oh, what's um, happened? Incident oh. there. Yeah, they, uh, yeah, I think we're going to have a red flag here for yeah, that. Must um, be a red flag. Um, Has to be a red flag. The, uh, oh, get out of the way of that. There's a, that looks like one of the uh, the, the balls that they put down when they're treating an injured rider. It looks yeah. like one of those sort of physio sort of pads that they've uh, got on the racetrack at the moment. Um, we'll keep an eye on that, but we'd expect a red flag to come out uh, as a result of that. Um, out in front, there's a uh, yeah, red flag has now come out on the timing screens, and no great surprise uh, after that. Um, of course, we'll keep an eye on uh, on the situation with the riders who were down. We didn't actually see what had happened in the lead up to that, but we saw marshals waving at the riders, um, but we didn't see any yellow flags out, uh, curiously, no. so we're not quite sure what had gone on there. Yeah, really not sure what happened there, but hopefully all riders involved um, are okay. I think that's Mario Aji who's... Yeah, it is, the 16 on his, uh, 16 on his helmet, yeah. Disappointment for Aji, who's fifth in the championship. But, yeah, fingers crossed the rest of the riders OK. Yeah, really, really strange. Not sure what happened there. Obviously, we saw the marshals signaling to the riders to get over to the other side of the track. But we walked the track yesterday, Lewis, and obviously walking pace is completely different to racing speed. But even when you're walking up, uh, it's really impossible to see uh, what's on the other side of the hill. It really is a sudden drop. Yeah, so you can't see anything. Yeah, no. like as you're walking up that hill, you, you all you can see is the sky. And even when you go over at the top of the hill, that's the 23 then that's down. Uh, that's David Real's bike um, in the middle of the track. Um, of course, we don't know where the rider is at the moment as they go and retrieve uh, his bike. Um, but yeah, it's 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 one of those nightmare scenarios. If there's if there's a bike or a rider or something else on the track, the other side of one of those crests. There's no way of being aware of what's coming until it's too late, unfortunately. So, uh, yeah, a very dangerous situation. Uh, and it's, it's just one of the features. As much as we absolutely love this circuit, um, that's a rider. We, uh, we don't know who that is at the moment, so we're not going to speculate on which rider that is who's uh, lying injured at the moment on track, although we were glad to see there was at least some movement going on there um, for that rider. Um, but, yeah, it's the worst-case scenario. If there is something on the track, whether it's a rider, a machine, or something else, you can't see it coming until it is literally too late. Yeah, exactly right. We saw uh, Aaron Connect crash there last year, I think it was in the Moto2 class. Um, and like I say, it's when you're at the bottom of that hill and the riders are coming over, uh, obviously at racing speeds, trying to get the, the front wheel down, you've not got much time to react. So hopefully all riders are okay. We'll bring you information on that when we get it. Um, but yeah, not, not a good start to the race then. Really, really strange to see the marshals at the side of the track trying to wave the riders um, towards the other side of the track without there being any yellow flags. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what occurred there. But yeah, there we go then. Yeah, yeah, but the problem was there was no yellow flag. There was just the gut marshal standing on the yeah, track. Yeah, yeah, I saw. I saw like. Oh, already, already. They got nothing. Nothing happened. 
interesting to hear that. So there was no yellow flags according to the riders, just Marshall. So it must have been a, a real shock uh, coming over the crest to see that. Um, just listening into the conversation with Kelso. I mean, the one thing that would, would work in the, the riders' favour there is that they, they, they would be naturally going over to the right-hand side anyway on the racing line, so that would work in their favour. But yeah, it's the last thing as a rider that you would expect to see, particularly when you've not seen any yellow flags already, to be coming out of that corner. And as you're coming over that crest, all you can see are marshals on the track waving you across the other side of the track. I mean, even if you do avoid whatever hazard is up ahead of you, that's immensely distracting um, for the riders who, as, as I mentioned, as Joel Kelso has pointed out, that's the last thing you're expecting to see because there's no flags to warn you. The flags are there to warn you of an impending danger up ahead. Uh, and unfortunately, on that occasion, for whatever reason, and of course, we can't speculate on that either, there didn't appear to be any. No, we'll keep our fingers crossed that all the riders involved were okay. I think it looked like the uh, one of the riders collected one of the, the, the big bags um, as we see a rider. Thankfully, they're moving, so that's a good sign at least. Not sure who that is yet. As I say, we'll bring you information when we get it. Yeah, when Mar when medics or marshals rush out to a rider who's injured either at the side of the track or on the track or whatever it may be, they always carry out these sort of padded sort of, I don't know how to describe them, but yeah, these these pads yeah. with, um, with medic or something or other written on them just to, um, you know, protect the rider and just to be there to treat the rider. So it appears it's one of those um, that a rider hit, which, you know, there's, there's no good thing to hit when you're uh, going across a racetrack at the speed of that. But, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's much better than hitting a rider or a motorcycle. Um, but either way, it's, it's, it's a pretty, it's a pretty sketchy situation to, to say the least, to have that kind of thing going on. And, uh, yeah, there'll certainly be questions asked about that, about about what went on in lead up to that incident. Because as I say, we didn't we didn't notice any incidents at that corner um, on the lap before, but clearly someone had gone down. We don't know whether Rayal, um, who was the 23 bike that we saw, we don't know he whether he was the rider who went down or the rider who collected the um, the incident later on. Because we also saw Mario Aggi involved um, later on. Um, we're, uh, we're looking at the time screens to see who else didn't make it across uh, back to the pits. We've also got Fusco who didn't make it across, but of course we saw his incident earlier on. Buazri didn't make it across either, so I wonder if he was the other rider involved uh, down at turn three in that incident that we saw shortly before the stoppage, um, as we see um, the, uh, the, the medics getting ready to uh, stretch away the injured rider. As we say, we're, we're not going to speculate too much on, on his condition, although we were grateful at least to see a little bit of movement from him um, as he lied on the track, but clearly in a great deal of pain. And of course, any uh, any updates on his condition, we'll bring you them as soon as we get them. Yeah, exactly right, Lewis. They're just having a chat with the, the race directors there who have gone round to see what's happened. Yeah, we'll keep our fingers crossed that the rider involved is okay. And yeah, like we say, we've not really had any information in the commentary box, so we'll bring it to you as soon as possible, but it's it's at the worst place really. We've mentioned it, Lewis. It's the worst place possible on a on a roller roller coaster of a track. It's a completely blind entry. Um so yeah, a massive obviously shock to the system for the riders coming over the crest of the hill, not seeing any yellow flags, just seeing the marshals standing at the side of the track. Uh, waving across, but the riders now back in the pit boxes will be debriefed with the teams at the start of the race. So let's update you then on what's likely to happen next once everything has been taken care of uh, with the injured rider and he receives the treatment that he needs uh, out on track. Um, quick restart will most likely be uh, deployed, which will involve a uh, one minute window where the riders can get out of the pits and back out onto track for what will essentially be their sighting lap before they pull up on the grid for the warm up lap. And we haven't had it confirmed yet, but we would expect it to be two thirds of the original distance that they will race under um, when they do resume. Of course, we've got no news yet on an expected restart time uh, just yet. Um, of course, once we have that, we'll confirm that to you as well. Um, but yeah, we'll expect a two-thirds race distance uh, when we get underway, which will be around 12 laps uh, once we get underway once again. But uh, as I say, quick restart will most likely be deployed. But once we have that time for you and the likely uh, restart time and new race distance, we'll bring that to you as soon as we get it. So if our timing screens are correct, it'll be Joel Kelso who led over the line on the last completed lap. Um, so that'll mean he starts from Pulp Sisk. And there's Ivan Ortola. 
That's a good point, that, on the uh, on the grid, actually, because Holgado got up to yeah. second before the uh, the red flag. So he's been suddenly in a very good position for the uh, for the restart of the race. So he's, uh, he's poor qualifying. There you see the marshals setting out the spots. The 96, I can see there, is back on at least the, uh, the third row. It looks like the original grid spots that they're setting up there with Ortola second and Garcia third. So... Uh, We'll, uh, we'll confirm that, because I think we're far enough into the race. Um, we've completed three laps, so I'd imagine we're far enough into the race where they wouldn't go back to the original grid. Um, but again, we'll confirm that when we, uh, when we confirm that. Another thing that is worth pointing out, and I know it's not at the forefront of anyone's minds just at the moment, as we uh, keep our fingers crossed for the, uh, the rider who's uh, now in the ambulance um, looking uh, to receive treatment, is that Jose Julian Garcia hadn't taken his long lap penalty yet. Um, in that race and uh, obviously it's a bit of a moot point now but I would have assumed if he'd taken his long lap penalty before the red flag he wouldn't have had to serve it again in the restart he would have got the penalty out of the way he would have probably been starting deep on the grid for the restart probably outside the top 10 but the fact is he's now going to have to start if he starts from his original grid slot he's third if not he's fourth on the grid because that's where he was on the last complete lap before the red flag and he still has a long lap penalty to serve and in a shorter race with less time to make the ground back up yeah this is the thing Lewis isn't it I think he had a couple of chances uh, at least one lap to do it, he didn't decide to, which is uh, completely up to the rider team. I'm sure they spoke about it before the race, when when was best to do it, in what situation, if he was uh, leading the race, maybe dive in at the first opportunity, if he's in the thick of it, maybe try another lap to try and get a little bit of an advantage. Uh, but yeah, it's a good point, Lewis, so he'll have to take a long lap penalty. He's fourth on our timing screen, so it'll be interesting to see, especially in Holgado's case, if they do revert back to the original grid order, because if they don't, Holgado will start second, uh, which of course is a much better position than uh, P9 and gives him the chance to take the whole shot from Kelso. And when he did lead the race, we did see him start to edge clear. So riders involved, number 16, that's Mario Aji. Number 21 is Harrison Voigt. Number 23 is David Real. So you wonder whether Harrison, so you wonder whether Harrison Voigt was the rider who initially brought out the, the hazard with the marshals on track. Because we did get the notification on screen that Harrison Voigt had crashed uh, prior to that incident. Of course, we didn't get a notification of which corner that was. Um, so clearly he crashed there and was um, on the track or the marshals were um, on the track treating him at that point. And, and that's what the riders came across um, as they came over that blind crest at that point in the track. So um, so yeah, those are the three riders involved. Of course, we'll, uh, we'll bring you updates as we get them on there on their condition. We did see Mario Adji up on his feet um, at the side of the racetrack. So, um, so yeah, he's clearly okay. He's perhaps the wrong word to use, but he was up on his feet um, and uh, no serious injuries there uh, for him. Uh, and of course, we'll confirm the situation of the other two riders um, as soon as we have some official information on that. But uh, no use yet on a, a restart time. But uh, interestingly, the marshals have now taken away those uh, those um, markers that they'd set up on the grid so perhaps they've been given some information yeah. that perhaps they weren't quite putting them in the right spots yeah you have to think they would go to the last completed lap I think that's uh, once you've completed I think it's uh, two laps isn't yeah it? I think it's two laps and obviously they, they cross the line to complete the third lap before uh, encountering the issues the marshal just sweeping away some day we on the side of the track um, as yeah the race direction guys just checking everything's okay with the circuit um, and yeah so it looked like it was Harrison Voigt who was the rider getting attended to so we'll send our best wishes of course to Harrison Voigt the Australian uh, hopefully it's nothing too serious we did see him moving which is obviously a very positive sign to start with but fingers crossed it's nothing too serious as we wait to get back underway here at the Algarve International Circuit MT Foundation 77 garage that's Gerard Ryu. Positively ancient by uh, Moto3 Junior World Championship standards. 21 years old. Um, Gerard Ryu, he's a bit of a stalwart of this class. Uh, the number 67. Took his uh, first podium ever in this class back at Jerez last season. This is his fifth season. Um, and it's certainly something that makes me, uh, as a 30-year-old, feel old when you actually uh, see the majority of the riders in this paddock starting, uh, being born in a year, starting with a two. Gerard uh, Ryu is one of those, like me, who's a 90s boy, born in 1999. Yeah, like you say, Lewis, a veteran of the class, really. Seventh mm. season in the Moto3 uh, Junior World Championship. You don't really see that very often, obviously, once you've completed a few... 
uh, seasons, you either tend to move up. So we've got some information then. Pit lane to open at 13.30 local time, so that's nine minutes away. Uh, no other information than that. We've not got the quick restart procedure pop up on our screens. We'll assume that is the case. Um, so yeah, pit lane open in nine minutes time. As we focus in on Shon Nishimura, he's got some scratches on his leathers there from a from an earlier off. Shon Nishimura in the Red Bull Rookies Cup this year as well, the number 57. Yeah, had a crash in qualifying one yesterday, didn't Nishimura? Went yeah. down at turn 11. Um, so it's been a, a tricky weekend for him in, in some respects and uh, a bit of a tricky season for him as well um, so far. Of course, he's um, a former uh, Asia Talent Cup winner. Uh, here we go. Quick restart procedure will be enforced. Pit lane opening, as we've already confirmed to you, uh, in uh, eight minutes now at uh, half past the hour. 10 lap race and they will go back interestingly to the original grid positions and uh, as they, they've confirmed there there's another thing we mentioned the riders will have 60 seconds to get out of the uh, pit lane once it opens to get out onto the grid so a 10 lap dash original grid positions which is good news um, for the likes of Jose Julian Garcia who's back on the front row of the grid even though he's still got a long lap penalty to serve bad news for uh, Daniel Holgado who goes back to ninth on the grid again and for Alonso, interesting, his teammate was back down to 28th. Yeah, that's the big one, isn't it? Obviously, Holgado from second to ninth. It's not it's not too much of a disaster, but Alonso, David Alonso made up uh, 10 places there on the opening cup of laps. He crossed the line 18th. He's going to be shuffled back down to 28th. So the hard work to do again for the Colombian uh, and for the likes of Scott Ogden as well, who got up to 16th place from 20th. And obviously, there's now less time to do it with the 10 laps to go instead of the original. So, yeah, work to do again for the riders. Uh, but they've proved that they can come through the pack in the opening couple of laps. So expect to see Holgado making moves again at the start of the race, which will get underway in around about... Well, pit lane opens in around seven minutes' time. The race will get underway shortly after that. There's Jose Antonio Rueda, the number 95. Second year in the Junior World Championship. He achieved his first podium last time out uh, in Barcelona with a third place. Backed it up with a sixth place in the second race. So a really successful outing at the Circuit de Barcelona, Catalunya. And he's currently eighth in the standing. So a solid second season in the Junior World Championship for Raider, one of the Australia Galicia talent team riders. He's another rider who's lost out a little bit through this, through the uh, reverting to the original grid positions, because he started 12th on the grid and had managed to get himself up to sixth by the time of the red flag. Of course, he led the race briefly um, when he was battling with his teammate here, uh, Marrera. Uh, Marrera, who was fifth when the race was uh, stopped, he will be fourth on the grid um, for the restart. Who else is particularly... Uh, Gained from this, or Tola's one, as we've mentioned, he's going to start second once again, despite being seventh at the time of the stoppage. A um, few other riders further down. Daniel Munoz, he's going to be seventh on the grid, despite dropping all the way down to 13th. So, uh, yeah, it depends on uh, whether you had a good qualifying or a good start, which depends on uh, how you've been affected by this. If you qualified well, you're in pretty good shape now because you're back up towards the front of the grid with a shorter distanced race. Uh, if you made a great start from a poor grid position, you've got all of that work to do again. Yeah, lucky for some riders and lucky for some, but obviously at the forefront of our minds is uh, the conditions of Harrison Voigt continuing to send our best wishes. Hopefully it's nothing too serious for the Australian as the, the marshals then put the grid slots out on the start line. There's Zyri Fidin Asman, the only other race winner in 2021, apart from Daniel Holgado. He led into turn one briefly, I think, at the start of the lap two, wasn't it? Mm. Uh, then just got shuffled back down. He crossed the line in eighth place, so he's going to start the race from fifth. He's all smiles in the box, so clearly confident about the prospects ahead in the 10-lap dash we've got coming up. Five minutes until pit lane opens. And you'd imagine it's going to be all-out attack from the start for these guys. There's no time really to... Uh work your way into this race to be patient to try and build your way in you're just gonna have to go on the attack from the start so particularly look out for Holgado who's gonna have to just really go for it from the start in a 10 lap race if you make a poor start and drop outside that top 10 in such a short distance your race is essentially done as far as challenging for the victory is concerned so key first lap coming up here particularly for the likes of Holgado as he looks to try and make his way back through the field again because he'd made his way to the front in a couple of laps hadn't he uh, from that poor position made his way up to sixth on the first lap and then went from sixth to first on the run down to turn one at the start of the third lap 
Um, so that's the kind of template he'd be looking to follow again. And there's no reason why he can't. But of course, just because he's done it once doesn't mean he's going to be able to do it again. So uh, a tricky first lap coming up for Algardo. He's going to have to make sure he gets that start spot on and uh, get himself into a good position. Because as I mentioned, poor start here with such, just a 10 lap race. And there's very little time to recover the gap, gap again. Yeah, and when he got to the front, he did try uh, and streak clear from the back. He opened up a little bit of a gap, but Kelso got a great run into the final corner and there was a little bit of contact between them. Kelso got the elbows out um, and that just cost Daniel Holgado a little bit of a run down the straight and he did get swamped, but then obviously made his way back up to second place. There's David Munoz, a little bit of early drama for him on the start line, but he got his bike back going again and he will line up sixth place from after finishing well, after crossing the line third on lap three, David Munoz incidentally doing really well in the Red Bull Rookies Cup this year. He's second to uh, that uh, leader, David Alonso. He's won a couple of races over in the Red Bull Rookies Cup in Jerez and Mugello. Um, so if you haven't caught up with any of the Red Bull Rookies Cup races this year, do, because most of the junior, uh, not most, but a lot of the riders um, in the Rookies Cup are also in the Junior World Championship, and it's, it's always class racing. Um, so, yeah, do keep up with that as well as the Junior World Championship and all the other Road to MotoGP programs because these really are the stars of the future we're watching on display here at the Autodromo International de Algarve. We're going to see a few of these riders, you'd think, on the Moto3 again next year. You'd have to think the likes and if, of Holgado. And if you do watch the action, from, uh, particularly from the Saxon ring, make sure you watch the final few stages <laughs> of that race. It was quite extraordinary yeah. uh, for the championship contenders who uh, all pretty much went out of contention in one fell swoop, didn't they? It is yeah. fantastic racing there. All unequal machinery, all going for it. Um, and it is interesting, isn't it, how different the, the, the standings can be from one class to another. Of course, um, David Alonso, who's looking so good in the Red Bull Rookies Championship, of course, it's his first year in the uh, FIMCV Junior Moto3 World Championship, so there's no guarantee that the success is going to translate from one to the other. But he's been, uh, he made a dominant start to the Red Bull Rookies Cup with a double win here, but he's not enjoyed it all his own way in his rookie season in the Moto3 Junior World Championship, having dominated for large parts of the uh, European Talent Cup last season, So uh, particularly with his success here. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, it's it's another stage, isn't it, for these riders to prove what they're all about and uh, on Grand Prix level tracks as well, as this place is. You know, if, you, if you're competitive around a place like Portimao, it tends to mean you're a bit good. <laughs> it definitely does, because this track is so technical, so fast, so many different uh, points of the circuit where you can really lose time or really gain time. It's so tight and twisty at some parts. It's got everything. It's got a nice long front straight just under a kilometre long. It's got tight, twisty corners. It's got fast sweeping corners. It's up and down. <laughs> we said yesterday, Lewis, it really is sort of the perfect venue, isn't it? Just look at the scenery around there as we get uh, the MTA riders revving their engines as the all of them will. Pit lane will open very, very shortly, less than a minute to go now, and they've got 60 seconds to get out of pit lane. If you don't get out of pit lane in that 60 seconds, then unfortunately you're going to have to start from pit lane, which really is the end of your race with just 10 laps on offer. Yeah, exactly. So uh, David Munoz will be uh, double checking that that motorcycle's running uh, as he gets on it to uh, head out for the sighting lap. And, uh, and yeah, what you'll see is you'll see a sighting lap to the grid. They'll have one mechanic uh, or one team member waiting for them to show them where to park, essentially, um, for the warm-up lap. And then they'll head straight off once everyone's in position, straight onto the warm-up lap, and then straight into the race. So there'll be no uh, long build-up to the race here. They'll be straight on with the action uh, once they head out of pit lane which opens in one second from now. The green flag will wave. There we go, and out they go um, onto the track, led by the 58 of Luca Lanetta. And, uh, of course, they will pull out onto the grid now, and we will soon go racing once again for a 10-lap dash for the cash in Portimao. Yeah, this is going to be good, isn't it? It was going to be good anyway, but a 10-lap dash, none of the riders are going to be playing games, hanging around. They've all got to go for it. There's your pole sitter, Joel Kelso. He looked good in the opening exchanges. Kept tabs with Daniel Holgado when he threatened to break clear. And as we've mentioned at the top of the show, Lewis, Kelso has really, really come on form in Portimao this weekend. Like you said earlier, it's uh, it does make you wonder when a rider has a, a couple of events on the Grand Prix scene. Obviously, you're going to learn so much being um, around the Moto3 World Championship riders or in the case of the Moto2 guys and the Moto2 World Championship riders. Obviously, the level is a little bit above 
the fastest rides in the world on the fastest tracks in the world. It just makes you wonder how much you can learn and how much you can bring into races like this for the likes of Kelso. Yeah, it sounds like such a simple thing to say, but in, in, in pretty much any sport, the best way to improve is to compete against people better than you because it, you, uh, it gives you a perfect reference to learn from. And when you're racing alongside the likes of Pedro Costa, who's just ripping up the record books uh, in the Moto3 World Championship at the moment this season, uh, as, a rider who, as we've already seen, is here this weekend, um, it just raises your level because you see what these guys are doing on a day-to-day -day basis and it just gives you that reference to, uh, to learn from. And Kelso, he was more than... He didn't disgrace himself at all in his Grand Prix appearances. He was more than competitive. Did get himself into a little bit of trouble at Aston. Had to serve um, a penalty there. Uh, as we see the 13 of Tapia going through the long lap penalty lane. Of course, that's where we're going to see Jose Julian Garcia very, very shortly. There he is now. That's not his long lap penalty, despite uh, <laughs> perhaps what his fans might hope. He'll have to go through there again in the very early stages of the race. It'll cost you around three seconds to go through there. Um, so uh, Garcia will want to take that as soon as possible and try and keep himself in touch with what is likely to be a pretty frenetic front group. Yeah, unless your name is Johan Zarco, it does cost you around three <laughs> seconds. But if you've uh, been studying the Frenchman or watched the 2020 Czech Grand Prix, then you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, that's just about as perfect long lap penalty lane uh, you're going to get. So the riders then come to the start of finish line. Not sure what that was waving across in the background of the track. Hopefully there's nothing on track debris-wise. There is the Champions League behold Gargo. Hold hold Gardo, I'll put my teeth in. He's got work to do again from ninth on the grid, but he did it in um, the opening exchanges of the original race start. Can he do it again when the lights go out here? There's your pole sitter Kelso. They'll line up on the grid for seconds really have a quick chat with the the team member give them a good, good look and then they'll be back off on a warm-up lap and then we'll be going again there's the number 63 of Sire Rifidin Asman I think all the riders who are able to take part are there on the grid 30 seconds I think that was the quickest 30 yeah. seconds of, of my life but here we go then warm-up lap underway what are we going to witness in the 10 lap dash lewis any predictions i'm sure uh, you've got a few but <laughs> trying to make predictions in the moto 3 classes uh, it's not an impossible yeah it's fraught with danger i would have said <laughs> i mean uh, holgado obviously is the man to keep an eye on from ninth on the grid he, he was so ruthless and clinical in the early stages of the original start to get through the field as quickly as he did um, and he's going to have to be aggressive. As I mentioned, he's, there's no time in a race of this sh short distance to be patient. You've just got to, you've just got to go for it. Temperature climbing here now, up to 27 degrees. It's a, a pretty hot day. Uh, you know, certainly if you're a two Englishmen as we are, these are temperatures that we very rarely experience. So uh, yeah, these are perfect conditions really for uh, some motorcycle racing. And yeah, it's going to be a, a fast-paced uh, race that we're going with right ahead of us. Ten laps. And, uh, and yeah, as I say, Holgado's the rider to watch from, tenth, uh, from ninth on the grid. He's got to try and make that ground early on and get himself into that leading group uh, before already gaps appear in it. And Garcia is the other rider to keep an eye on it. Long lap penalty to serve very early in the race. Can he either get out front early on and try and minimize the damage, or can he make up that ground quickly once he does serve the penalty? So Holgado, the championship leader then, as a recap, is 53 points clear of Ivan Otero in second place, who has seven points uh, in his pocket ahead of David Munoz in third place, who is 60 points behind Daniel Holgado. So as we mentioned before, this really is an opportunity for the likes of Ortola and Munoz and everyone else uh, vying for the top positions in the championship to really try and reel in Daniel Holgado, who is the runaway uh, leader in this uh, Junior World Championship in 2021. So, yeah, the 10 lap dash. It's going to be feisty, it's going to be thrilling, but who will come out on top? Nobody knows at the minute, but we're going to know in around about 20 minutes or so, maybe less. It's going to be an excellent race. Who will win it? Onto the grid they come. Then reminder of the championship situation then. Holgado leads it by 53 points from Ivan Artola, who starts second. David Munoz is seven points further back in third. Uh, with David Salvador 
uh, eight points behind Munoz in fourth. Um, Holgado, of course, with that championship lead, it's a big opportunity for Ortola if he can convert that second place on the grid to try and close that gap. Joel Kelso, uh, back in 18th in the championship, he's only had an eighth and an 11th so far this season, but he's certainly in a good position to uh, improve on that this afternoon. Here we go then. The riders taking their position on the grid. There's Holgado, the number 96. There's Garcia, long lap penalty coming for Garcia, the number 20. There's Kelso, the pole sitter once again. David Munoz, what can he do from sixth on the grid? The red flag clears, the lights will come on. The green flag waves in the background and we're nearly ready to go here. And we're underway once again in the Most 3 Junior World Championship. And once again, it's Ivan Antolu. It looks like he's got the best start from the middle of the front row. Joel Kelso getting away OK-ish to slide into second. There's Asman again, once again, getting a good start. But it's Ivan Antolu who grabs the whole shot from pole sitter Kelso. Asman slots into third. That's Garcia going up the inside of Moreira into fourth place into turn three. I think we're all OK at the minute. Where's Holgado? I think I he's think made he's, a decent yeah, enough he's getting start. at least two. He's just on the inside there of uh, David Munoz. He was in seventh as he came through the first corner after getting a couple off the line, but I think that will now be sixth uh, as they come down towards turn five. Uh, it's the 24 then of Ortola that leads with Kelso just behind, and it is indeed, well, it was Holgado in seventh, but he's just been eased wide again uh, by Munoz. Back down to seventh for Holgado. They're not letting him through as easily this time. No, there's certainly not work to do then for Holgado down into turn five, but it's Ortola then leading the way. He led the way in the original race start, then got picked off on the run into turn five uh, by Joel Kelso, who slipped down the order. Where's Joel Kelso gone? There he is. He's now behind Holgado, so I'm not sure what happened to Kelso there. He was running in second place was the pole sitter, and now he's back down to about eight, four, ninth. So not sure what happened to the Australian there, and he's got uh, the number 69 TM right that is. company. Whoa, that was close going down the hill but all safe and sound at the minute. Ortola leading up into turn 13. It's Asman making another good start from the second row, isn't it? It is, yeah, and Garcia still holds his third position off the line then. The 92 of Moreira is fourth. That's where he started um, this race. Um, Holgado then in a good position at the moment. He's uh, just one, two, three, he's about sixth along in that leading group, which is where he was at the end of the first lap in the original start. So he's going to be in a pretty good position on the slipstream here as wide goes the leader, uh, Ortola, and loses the lead over across the line, although he'll now be right in the slipstream of Seyfuddin Asman as they come across the line. Uh, three, four abreast they go. Marrera up the inside. Garcia looks like he's going to lead this one, and he is, as the 64 of David Munoz comes through into third position. Position. Across the line, Holgado came through in seventh. He lost the place uh, to Kelso as they came across the line. Although that could quite easily have changed because it's changing corner by corner here. It really is. David Munoz there backing it in into turn three. I thought he was going to dive up the inside. Oh, here we go then. Incorrect grid position for rider 64. That's David Munoz. He's got a long lap penalty. So what happened there then on the grid? Incorrect grid position. He's just been picked off by Ivan Artoli. He's the first of the two purple bikes. That was close in the background. Who was that? And he's down. That's one of the junior talent team bikes, I think it is. Can't quite see who it is from the, uh, the side of the bike there. But yes, so drama in the championship chase. It's 33. That is Tashkorn Barazri after his best qualifying result of 21, it's disaster for Barazri, unlucky for could, the tie rider. I can only assume for David Munoz, I wouldn't have oh. imagined he'd be in the wrong grid slot because he was starting sixth on the outside of the second row, so he would have a good job getting the wrong grid slot from there. I can only assume he was starting ahead of his grid position and slightly out of his grid slot, which is, you know, he's illegal, you're not allowed to do that. He's trying to make the most of it now and get himself up to second place and minimize the damage of that. But yeah, that's a pretty fundamental error, that one, to not have yourself parked correctly on the grid. Garcia has been given his long lap penalty now on the timing screens as he now goes up the inside, and I think he's, uh, he's going to lead this one over the line now as they're, they're fanning out <laughs> Of a position. Interestingly as well, the other two riders who had long lap penalties, Fusco and Watley, we didn't see them take their long lap penalties earlier in the first race, but they have got to serve it again in this one. Yeah, Fusco there, number 69, right behind uh, Jose Julio Garcia and right next to David Munoz. So all three of those riders have got to take a long lap penalty. Who's going to lead into turn one? I have no idea. There's about 10 riders abreast. Even Otola looks like he's going to do it. David Munoz at the inside, but it is Ivan Otola who slots in. And it is that Daniel Holgado who wins third place. I think it is. David 
David Alonso, the Colombian, fastest lap of the race. Where is David Alonso across the line? He's up to 16th from 28th. So a, a great opening couple of laps in the restart for David Alonso. He's just behind teammate Scott Ogden. Did you see Marcus Uriate there on the 89 of the Gleaves bike with the bright yellow wheels? He went right around the outside of about four of them into turn one. He came across the line in 12th. I can guarantee you he's higher than that now <laughs> um, as they came uh, through the first sector. An incredible brave for brave move. There's another few riders right. down, down at turn five. It's really uh, bottling up here. Um, with these, uh, this, this opening couple laps of the race, the, grid, the, the, the field is just closing up and it's just leading to one or two collisions as they uh, jockey around for position. Yeah, not sure who that was going down at turn five. We've seen a few incidents down at turn five today. It really is a bottleneck corner. It sucks you in and it's easy uh, to go down. Diogo Moreira's crash. So Diogo Moreira was one of those riders, 12th in the championship. Diogo Moreira starting fourth was on pole position here in the Red Bull Rookies. Thankfully, he's up and okay. He's trying to get the bike restarted for that's disaster for Diogo Moreira then. So he was one of the riders involved. It looked like there was a few of them, although Moreira looks like the only one to have gone down. Yeah, we're looking at um, Matsuyama's not coming through the second sector either, so I wonder whether he was involved as well. Fastest rider on track, David Alonso. Fastest lap of the race last time around. He's already up to 16th from 28th on the grid. He was the only rider in the 149s that lap time last time around. And when you consider that the leaders were doing 151s, it tells you that Alonso is racing through the pack at a rapid rate of knots. Yeah, confirmation then to Kuma Matsuyama, the junior talent team rider, has crashed out as well. I think that was at the same instant at Term 5. We're not seeing pictures there. Hopefully Matsuyama's OK, as we have a new race leader in Daniel Holgado. You can see the two uh, Aspar junior riders at the back of your screen there. That's Ogden and uh, David Alonso, who is the fastest rider on track. There you go. Uh, Alonso and Ogden right at the back of this group. So they're in contention. Both in the points already. Yeah and their teammate, the championship leader, is now at the front again. What we're getting a replay of here. And it's okay, so this is what happened down at turn five. Just seen the end of it. Didn't quite see how it occurred. But yeah, there you can see Matsuyama and Diogo Moreira going down at turn five. Thankfully, both riders okay, which is the main thing. Unlucky uh, for those two. And they'll be back in Aragon next time around to try and make amends. I think uh, Gerard Ryu was the other rider held up in that. He did a 155.6 on that last lap. Drops all the way down to 28. So uh, I would imagine he was the other rider to get badly held up in that incident. So then, what have we got here? Holgado leading from Rueda. And they've got a little bit of a gap to... Uh, Ivan Ortola. I'm not quite sure what happened there. Maybe when we were looking at the replay of the Moreira Matsuyama crash, something happened, but Holgado and Moreira then have got a little bit of a gap. Interesting to see what it is overnight. It looks to at least be half a second, so if they don't beat each other up too much, this could uh, this could really spell bad news for the chasing pack, especially Ortola, who, remember, is second in the championships, Holgado. There's Fusco taking his long left penalty, the number 69. Just about keeps it in between the white lines. If they don't keep it in between them white lines, he's wide on the exit, um, th then they have to redo the long lap penalty. So I think that was all okay. Yeah, and we haven't, I don't think we saw it on screen, but I'm imagining Garcia's, well, I'm not sure Garcia's taking his actually, because he's down 13th, but he's still only 1.4 seconds off the lead. Um, so I'd be surprised if he's taken his penalty yet. David Alonso is now up into 13th position. Um, and again, he's continuing to lap faster than most of the riders ahead of him. So he is steaming through the pack. Um, as we keep an eye on the leaders. Holgado um, has now got Ortola ahead of him, so that little break for the leading two didn't last long at all. No, it didn't. The slipstream effect coming into full play there. I think it was David Munoz down the front straight there getting uh, a little bit out of shape. Incidentally, I don't think he's taken his long lap either, so, yeah, David Munoz uh, currently in fourth... Well, he was in fourth place over line. He's been shuffled back to about seventh place, it looks like now, just ahead of teammate Daniel Munoz. Still Holgado leading then. He fought his way back up the inside of Ortoda at turn three. And Ortoda's now slipped down uh, to fourth place behind the number 89. That's Marcos Uriarte. Yeah, he's up to third now. He got on the podium here in Red Bull Rookies back in April. So he's got some form around here. Um, pole position in rookies at Mugello as well earlier this season. So this is a rider really on the rise. And he's come from 11th on the grid. I mentioned earlier on that he was putting in some rather brave overtaking attempts down to turn one. He is now right in contention here uh, with this leading two. Um, he's got uh, the 64, uh, sorry, the 64 Derek Munoz is slightly further back. He's got the 84. Uh, just behind him 
Um, well, Van der Goldberg is in this group as well. He's having a good uh, race so far. Uh, but yeah, there's just so many riders in this leading group. It's Ortola next along. Uh, I'll get the rider right eventually. Um, but yeah, there's so many riders in this leading group. 1.6 seconds covers the top 14 at the moment. And as I say, we're coming up to uh, half distance now. Four laps completed. Uh, this will be the end of lap five. Half the race still to go. Who's going to lead over line? I think it's Holgado, but I can assure you he's probably not going to lead in Sturm on the slipstream. Marcus Oriarte took took right behind the Gas Gas rider. They fan out heading into turn one. Marcus Oriarte on the outside. Who's going to break late? It is Holgado who keeps the lead into turn one. So important there for Holgado. But there's so many riders in this gaggle. Like you say, Lewis, any one of these riders could win. Let's have a look at where Alonso is over line. He's 11th now, so good progress from him and teammate Scott Ogden. They're just at the back of this group somewhere. Um, so, yeah, good progress. Joel Kelso's down in eighth place. This is all going to change in the last five laps. Yeah, Kelso got a bit boxed in into turn one that time around. He's struggling Ooh, to make progress as, uh, as Munoz gets his elbows out into turn five. And that's really uh, uh, cost Garcia badly. And he's still to take his long lap penalty. So uh, if his plan was to try and build up a bit of time early on so he would minimize the damage of our long lap penalty, it certainly not worked um, for the uh, 658 rider. And this is a crucial phase of the race now because Holgado once again has managed to get himself out front. Uriarte next along. But Holgado, the last thing that they can afford to do is let Holgado get into a rhythm out front. And they can't just rely on the slipstream pulling them back into uh, in contention on the main straight. Because if they let Holgado get too far away, that won't have the same effect. No, exactly. They need to be close enough before the slipstream to try and overtake instead of trying to use the slipstream just to get onto the back of Holgado for then Holgado to just streak clear again over the lap. But Oriarte is doing well here in the third sector. Uh, to claw in the advances. So then, Garcia does take the long lap penalty. All nice and tidy, I think, there from the Spaniard. Yes, it was. So where does he come out? I think he'll be outside the points, yeah. That's Sho Nishimura. He's just 16th uh, he'll come be. out of. So, yes, Sho Nishimura then 16th. <laughs> Nishimura, who's the fastest rider on track, by the way. <laughs> yeah, amazing stuff, amazing stuff. So, Uriarte then in the slipstream, Daniel Holgado. Importantly, Holgado leads over the line. So, Uriarte not close enough to lead uh, over the line. That will be important in the latter stage of the race, especially on the last lap. But it's not either of them who's going to lead into turn one. It's Jose Antonio Rueda. Alonso is now into the top 10 on the uh, Aspar Gas Gas, bringing along his uh, European Talent Cup sparring partner from last year, Vanden Goldberg, who's just behind him in 11th. Uh, Holgado tries to take the lead back, but he's quickly uh, answered back by Rueda, um, who's putting in a good showing here. He's, um, he's, he's I say, he's putting in one of his best showings that we've seen in this championship, and he's already building out a bit of a gap over Holgado. We saw Holgado lose a bit of time in the final sector of the lap. Whether that was just the uh, chasing pack being particularly strong through there, or whether he's perhaps a little bit weak through there, we're perhaps going to find out, because if Rueda can pull out a bit of a gap, with just only, four, well, three and a half laps to go now, any slight break here could make all the difference. Yeah, definitely. We've seen Holgado try and break clear uh, a couple of times now, and he has been able to build that gap up, but just when you think he might be able to break the, break the slipstream, uh, the rider's reeling back in again, and Moreira's doing a little bit of a similar thing here, not quite to the same effect as Holgado was. They're still right tucked up behind him, uh, the number 95. Uh, but the top four have sort of got a little bit of a gap now to David Munoz, who I don't think has taken his long lap penalty as we've not seen him do that, but it's not flashing up in our timing screens either, so I'm not sure what's going on there with the number 64. He's not going to take it this lap either. So with three and a bit laps to go, it's Rueda leading the way in the number 95. Can they get into the slipstream? I think they will be able to, but that's a healthy margin for Rueda. We'll see what it is across the line. He's a little bit wide on exit, as is Holgado, but I don't think it matters because you can carry the pace around the outside of that corner. Here we go then, across the line, Rueda. The gap's down to pretty much nothing, as you can see. The riders are in the slipstream. Holgado pulls out and takes the lead. Will he lead into turn one? I think he will, unless Ariat is going to travel around the outside. No, didn't quite fancy it. Uh, as Jose Julian Garcia, who we saw take the long lap penalty, sets the fastest lap of the race. Yeah, it's all too late though for him, I think, to try and make a ground. There he is, he's still in 16th. So what he's done is he's, he's been able to close back down on that leading pack, uh, which makes up the entire point scorers at the moment. He's been able to close that down, but he's only got three laps now to try and pick off 15 riders, which is easy said the done as uh, Holgado gets it all out of shape under breaker for turn five. He still holds it, I think. Oh, no, he doesn't. He runs slightly wide and lets Ottola back through uh, into the lead. Uriarte is going to take full advantage of that. He just got a little bit unsettled under breaking there to turn five and paid the price for it. 
easily doing. We've mentioned it before in turn five. It's a tricky corner to get right at the best of times. And when you get it wrong, it can really go wrong. But Holgado keeps it upright, and so does. I think that was Raider getting out of shape. Yes, it was. So Raider keeps it right. He's past by pole sitter Kelso. It's getting busy here. Two and a half laps to go. It's all going to kick off. Daniel Munoz up the inside on the second of the purple machines. Is that Oriarte going to try and take the lead from Otoli? Yes, it is. What a move down the hill, up the inside. Is Otoli going to fight straight back? No, he's not. This is going to go all the way, though, as David Munoz now moves up the inside of Holgado. It's all kicking off here. <laughs> As I mentioned, pass or be passed. That is pretty much the rule, and that's what's happening now. He's being passed, unfortunately. It's Oriate who gets it wide uh, through turn 13. If you leave the door open, if you even leave the door half open, there's at least one or two Moto3 riders who'll be prepared to ride straight through it. Um, and in the end, that's exactly what happened to Oriate. As they come across the line, there'll be just two laps to go now. Olgado has been beaten up a little bit on this lap as Otola leads it across the line. Oriate, though, comes alongside him. He was just, uh, well, they were dead level as wow. they crossed the line. Nothing between them as they go five, six abreast uh, across the line. Who's going to lead it? It's Kelso, the pole man, who comes back into lead. He's been pretty quiet so far. It looks like he was struggling to make progress. Not any longer. So then, has Kelso timed this race to perfection? He leads with two laps to go. It's very busy down into the tight turn three right-hander. But yeah, Joel Kelso then leads from Daniel Holgado and Uriarte. Team MTA watch on that sort of team. He's, where did he cross the line? Oh, he crossed the line first. He's in. Uh, oh, he's off. He. Oh, wow. What a save from Ivan Ortola. <laughs> it's cost him the race, but he stays on board. That was mightily close. Oh, a couple of riders are down. That's uh, the... Volpi, the number yeah. 77, is down. And it's an empty foundation bike. Uh, couldn't quite see who that was. Well, he was running with Nishimura, who was just two places ahead so. of him. So uh, I'd imagine it's him. It's a shame for Nishimura because he was having a good race. I was thinking Garcia, by the way, set another fastest lap last time around. And with those uh, incidents, he's, uh, he's onto the back of this leading group now. Uh, confirmation it was Nishimura with Volpi down at turn five. We can see him moving uh, at the moment, but clearly in a little bit of pain. Here's what happened. Just keep your eye on the back of screen um, as uh, they come through turn five. And there they are, both riders pretty much going down uh, together, unfortunately. Um, again, a very, very common incident down at turn five. Just a lap and a bit to go then as they uh, come through turn 13. And again, I mean, there's a little bit of a fragment in this leading Ooh, group now. There are close. four who are away at the front. And look at the gap that Kelso's pulled out. Kelso then, what's this going to be over line? It looks around about a second, it's at least over half a second. We said, has he timed it to perfection? It looks like he has, we're not sure what's happened. The group has fanned out. So leading on to the lap lap, it is your pole sitter, Joel Kelso, chasing a maiden victory in the Junior World Championship. He's chased by Holgado and Uriarte, and then there's, how big is that gap? It's a good second back to the gaggle of riders. So it looks like, barring any disasters, the podium places might be sorted out, but anything can happen on the last lap. Turn three, we go safely negotiated by all three riders. Holgado and Uriarte have really closed up on... Uh, oh, on oh. Kelso, who's out of the seat, running out of turn four, and Holgado's got him I down into the into turn five. That was almightily close to a crash from Kelso. I was just about to say, he took the fastest lap of the race last time around, and what a time to do it at 1.48.9, but he's then almost giving it away with that moment um, through the fast left-hander. He's still in a good position, though. He, and, I mean, he, he was in a good position in, as it was, so as Nico Terol watches on with his, his man now leading, he's not in a bad position at all here, Kelso. Second in the road um, as we come into the second half of this final lap. If he can get himself onto the tail of Holgado, does he wait until they come out of the final corner to try and make the move, or does he do the Pedro Costa move and try and dive past before they get there. Because if you lead out of this final corner, history tells you, you generally oh, lead over the line. Oh, 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 what a move from Kelso. I think he answered your question there, Luke. <laughs> He's not going to wait around. He doesn't want to get the sleep stream. He wants to be leading out that final corner, but so does Holgado. <laughs> not quite this time around. Uriarte is licking his lips in third place. What's going to happen then? Two corners to negotiate. I thought Kelso had left the door open there, but not quite. Rounding turn. 14. <laughs> the team look anxiously on. Is this going to be a day we win for Joel Kelso? Is it going to be a fifth win of the season for Daniel Holgado? Is Uriarte going to win it? I don't think it looks like from there. So then, out of the run from the final corner. It looks like Joel Kelso's got this in the bag, but is Holgado going to use the slipstream to try and get first place? I don't think he has. He's not. Five thousandths of a second. Joel Kelso is a Moto3 Junior World Championship winner. The team are ecstatic. Congratulations to the Australian 
what a ride. Incredible. Oriate does get the podium in third. Rueda took fourth ahead of David Munoz and shout out David Alonso. 28th in a 10 lap race up to sixth. Whew. Sensational stuff in the Moto3 Junior World Championship as always. Yeah, shout out to David Alonso. That's an absolutely sensational ride. P28 to P6. There's Daniel Holgado, another podium in 2021. He'll extend his championship lead with Ortola, finishing down in 12th place. So not, not a good race for even Ortola in terms of the championship down in 12th place. Chapel Kelso, though, what a ride from the Australian. A class stand-up wheelie up the hill, deservedly so. That's his first win. A maiden pole and a maiden victory. That is what you call a perfect weekend here in Portimao. We were wondering what Daniel Holgado could do from ninth on the grid. After the restart, he's answered our questions. He can claw his way back through the pack, get him to prime position. Wasn't quite the race win, but it wasn't far off. Five thousandths at the line. But as you can see, he'll be more than pleased with a second place. 20 more points in the bag. And Daniel Holgado really is running away with this 2021 Junior Moto3 World Championship. Copy and paste from the Kelso stand-up wheelie. Class stuff here from the top two podium finishes there. Joel Kelso getting congratulated by a couple of the riders. Sensational scenes, absolutely sensational. It always is very good racing in the Moto3 Junior World Championship. Of course, we send our best wishes to Harrison Voigt after the red flag. Fingers crossed the Australians okay. We'll bring you any latest information we have on uh, Voigt's condition when we get it. We've not had any information yet, so apologies for that. It's his compatriot Joel Kelso who takes the win. The number 66. He'll roll into Park Fermi for the first time in this class. And he'll be absolutely buzzing with that. Seems that Grand Prix experience in Germany and the Netherlands. Finished 17th at the Saxon Ring and then got a penalty. A pit lane start penalty in. Uh, the Netherlands, so he couldn't quite display what he could really show, but he's really showing what he can do today in Portimao. Has Joel Kelso. A fantastic weekend. We said before that he's shown superior pace. 0.3 seconds was his qualifying advantage. He was top in warm-up. And now he's on the top step of the podium on Sunday afternoon. Top work from the Australian. Here comes Daniel Holgado. It might not be the win, but 20 points is all that Daniel Holgado needs at this stage. He's running away with the championship. Congratulations in order for race winner Joel Kelso. As I say, five thousandths of a second splitting them across the line. Absolutely nothing to choose between the top two and Marcus Oriati in third place wasn't far off either. There he is. Third place, less than two tenths off the win. A fantastic ride from Uriarte. Hope you enjoyed that at home as much as we did in the commentary box. Joel Kelso will be speaking to Lewis Sudderby in a few moments time. He's just catching his breath, getting some much needed liquids on board. The problem was in turn one and turn two, three, I was strong, but I couldn't, never I was first in there. And then with two last to go, I, I have the opportunity first. I said, fuck, I, I don't care if I am first on this straight, I think I can pull a gap. And well, I do it now because I don't know about me. Interesting to hear then from the race winner. Apologies for any foul language used that you heard at home. There is the race winning overtake, and what a move it was. Down into the right-hander at turn 14. I say down, it's... You're going uphill into turn 14, and there it was across the line. The finish line came just in time for the number 66. Oriate there, of course, pleased with his third place finish. B2 
Mbappé, as Kelso said, he was really quick in turns one, two and three. Managed to bridge a little bit of a gap when he got to the front. That mistake on the final lap coming out of turn four almost cost him the race victory. He was out the saddle. Holgado overtook him. But he regathered and managed to retake Holgado in the race winning overtake. That we saw and crossed the line to emerge victorious. It's a shame there's only one race for the Moto3 Junior World Championship here in Portimao. They've treated us to a spectacular event, as has the European Talent Cup riders and Moto2 European Championship riders. As we now get to hear from Joel Kelso, the race winner, he's down in Pot of Omi with Lewis Sudeby. Joel Kelso, your first win in the FIA Moto3 Junior World Championship. A chaotic race, a lot going on, but you had to be patient there. Tell us about your race. Yeah, exactly, mate. Um, yeah, I mean, the race was hectic, hectic. So um, I realized I wasn't going to be able to pull a gap. So uh, I thought, well, let's just sit here, see what happens for the first few laps and um, wait until the opportunity. And then I felt at the end that I had a little bit more than, extra, uh, than everybody else. So I thought, OK, if I can lead into turn one, I can pull a gap by the straight, you know. And um, yeah, on the, the, the last lap, I managed to be first in turn one. I thought, OK, I'm only going to get this opportunity once. So I full on just went for it. Um, I got a bit loose in turn four and uh, Hulgada got me back and I thought, oh, we must uh, be in a big group. But I think uh, in the end we pulled a little bit of a gap enough that we weren't going to get attacked. And um, yeah, I was just waiting, waiting, waiting. And I knew the opportunity would come and um, I could see Hulgada was struggling a little bit on the break. So I knew that was the point where I was going to get him. And um, yeah, once I, I knew I had to lead coming out of the last corner. Um, yeah, and <laughs> I managed to get the pass done and then obviously come first under the straight and it was close. It was a slipstream city to the, to the line, but we managed to get it. So I'm super happy and I just can't thank everyone enough for all the support. My crew, uh, my family, I mean, the amount of hard work my mum does, it's amazing. And uh, yeah, I, I just want to thank everyone so much for this opportunity and I hope there's many more to come. Let's see. Congratulations. Thanks, mate. Here's the highlights then from the only race of the day in the Moto3 Junior World Championship. Kelso started on pole, but he didn't get the whole shot. That was Ivan Ortola as Holgado, the World Championship leader, made his way forward from ninth on the grid. A couple of riders went down at turn three before there was dramatic circumstances at the top of the hill, which brought out the red flags. About 15 to 20 minutes later, the race was restarted and once again, it was Kelso on pole position and once again, it was even Ortola who got the whole shot into turn one. As a 10 lap dash to the checkered flag played out in an extraordinary race in the Junior World Championship. Plenty of riders taking the lead, taking turns to lead. That's Jose Julian Garcia. He later had a long lap penalty to deal with. Turn five again providing some drama. That was Tashkorn Barazwi of the junior talent team going down. Back on track, Holgado was back at the front again, slowly picked off the riders in front of him, took the lead, and then started to edge clear, but Jose Antonio Rueda made sure he didn't have it all his own way. That's Raffaele Fusco taking one of the long lap penalties. Nicely done from the Italian. Rueda then threatened to break clear, but it wasn't to be. The slipstream coming into full effect. There's Jose Garcia taking his long lap penalty. That ultimately cost the Spaniard a chance of victory today. Before Joel Kelso returned to the race lead as Ivan Ortola, who eventually finished down in 12th after that huge moment. That was Volpi and Nishimura going down, but then on the last lap as Kelso led the way, he. High, nearly high-sided out of turn four. Holgado retook Lee, but there was the race-winning move at turn 11 and at the line. 0.005 seconds split the lead in Joe, and it's Kelso who's a race winner for the first time in the Junior World Championship. Ooh, 
just about caught our breaths then after that Lewis sort of be joining me back in the box and the final results are in it's Joel Kelso from Holgado and Urio so they're your podium finishers Rueda finished fourth David Munoz and David Alonso from 28th on the grid finished sixth Daniel Munoz seventh Asman finished eighth and David Salvador ninth in a ferocious battle here in the Algarve Scott Ogden from 20th on the grid claims a P10 great ride from the British rider he finished ahead of Jose Julian Garcia Zonta van den Gorber grabs points in the Junior World Championship. Great ride from him as Tapia and Lynetta close out the point score and finishes in a very, very close encounter. Ryu, Aegis, Clement Rouge, Eddie O'Shea, Morossi, Carraro, Detweiler and Fariel also finished the race just over 10 seconds down from the race win. Josh Watley, Shon Ishimura, Matteo Volpi and Tashkorn Brazwi were the last classified riders as we now get set for the podium. Yeah, that result will see the chance to have champion standings in a moment. That will vault Joel Kelso right up the standings. 13 points to his name prior to today. He'll have uh, added 25 to that. Uh, this afternoon, so uh, it won't put him too far away from the top 10 in the championship with that. Um, so a huge boost to uh, his season, a huge boost for the Aussie uh, to take his first victory as a Moto3 Junior World Championship rider. 20 valuable points for David Holgado, not what he came here for in the end, but the 20 points will do his championship campaign a huge boost. Uh, he'll, uh, I think, be uh, fairly happy despite those uh, five thousandths of a second uh, when he heads home from Portugal. Strengthens his position at the top of the championship. And a welcome podium for Marcos Oriate. 16-year-old on the podium in the FIM CV Junior World Championship. Holgado second, but the winner, Joel Kelso. First pole position yesterday, first victory today. And if that wasn't enough, he gets 200 euros, uh, 400 euros, in fact, uh, from Repsol uh, to take home with him as well. As we get ready to hear advance, Australia Fair. Special moment in any rider's career. Your first victory at any level. First victory at FIA Moto3 Junior World Championship level for Joel Kelso. Will the floodgates now open for the Australian? The Australians have had a pretty good season, haven't they, in uh, two-wheel motorsport with Jack Miller's return to winning ways. Those back-to-back -back victories earlier this season at uh, Jerez and Le Mans. And there's another young Aussie on the way up the ranks in motorcycle racing. Joel Kelso as a winner in the FIM Moto3 Junior World Championship. I think that will taste even sweeter than it would normally uh, for Kelso. It's a pretty hot day, as we mentioned earlier on out here uh, in Portugal. Kelso tasting the sweet taste of success. Holgado's championship lead then up to 69 points now. Ortola retains second, but he's now joined on 64 points by David Munoz. Salvador uh, stays fourth. Rueda climbs to fifth. Ogden stays sixth. Alonso climbs to seventh. Mario Aggi, the big loser, he drops three places to eighth. Sayerifedin, Asman, uh, he climbs one to ninth ahead of Takuma Matsuyama, who drops to 10th. Kelso, just outside the top 10. He climbs seven places to 11th ahead of Jose Julian Garcia. Daniel Munoz, Diogo Moreira, another disappointing afternoon for him. And Josh Watley, Gerard Ryu, and Colin Vaya. Uh, he 
just missed out on the points today. He's 17th overall. Marcus Oriate, his first points of the season, would you believe? And it takes him all the way into 18th in the championship with those 16 points that he got for third uh, this afternoon. Marcos Ruder just behind him ahead of David Royale. Marco Tapia, Noah Detweiler, Zonta van den Goldberg doubling his points tally up to six. He's 23rd overall ahead of Lanetta and Boazri. Rouge, Carraro and Harrison Voigt with Senna Aegeus uh, 29th. He has one championship point. So history made then in the FIM Moto3 Junior World Championship. A first ever victory for the Australian Joel Kelso. Can he now kick on in the second half of this season? One race still to go here and it's underway in just under 20 minutes time. Moto2 Race 2 is up next.